Hello, welcome to the Oswald Game. I'm your host, Rob. Welcome to an extra special episode. Did not know I'd be recording this today, so very excited. I've actually just come from being stood outside Games Workshop HQ, where I've been holding up a placard that says, Release the AOS Winter FAQ. It's what I tend to do between 2 and 5 uh, every afternoon. It fills my day, and it makes me happy, which is all that really matters in life. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. So on today's show, a couple of things. Number one, I'm going to be talking about the incredible two new ranges that it looks like coming out for Age of Sigmar from Games Workshop. you got the Lumineth Rulords or the uh, Rumineth Rulords. Who knows? Can't wait to talk about it. And of course, we're also going to be talking about the Grave Lords um, and the death of our dream of pirate vampires. But don't forget, uh, there is... Uh, oh, the Dice Dome. Thanks for hosting us. That's fun. Um, uh, yeah, don't forget, there's the chance of loads more um uh, pirate factions in the future uh, and if not there's loads of cool designs online for you to unlock the other thing i'll be talking about towards the end of the show is my treaties treatise um about why i think there's some of the conversations about some of the leaks because all these uh all this new cool stuff is probably going to be previewed on the games workshop stream on saturday i'm recording this as of tuesday afternoon so like unfortunately for the marketing department uh, it seems like um, they're kind of like the wind has been stolen from the sails. Although that's not how I personally feel. I'm actually still, if anything, more excited about Saturday and being able to see some of these things and hearing what they're about. However, I'm going to be talking about how I think that they market very badly. We'll, uh, we're talking about the leaks and the whole thing. So I'll be doing that towards the end because I think that'll be a fun thing to talk about. And I've got like some really strong feelings and opinions on it. Very strong. And we're going to watch some YouTube videos together. We're going to hang out. It's going to be super fun. Uh, I want to say hello to everyone on the Twitch chat. What up? Hal Alex, Full Grima, Scott B, Owen Jackson, Let's Go, Stu Flynn, uh, Wolf Priest Kajal, Dash Me, JBM. I hope you're all good. You guys are amazing. Uh, thanks to everyone who obviously supports me on the Honest Wargamer Patreon. And thank you to everyone who subscribes on Twitch, donates money to the show, or listens to the podcast. You guys are all get great. Let's be having it. Let's go, Dan Brooke. Let's go. Uh, how is it a leak if it's up on Warhammer Community? Well, it was leaked yesterday, uh, Dimeep. So two images came out. So two images were leaked yesterday. One of a kangaroo-style horse archer and one of a box. It looks like it's the store anniversary box. I, that might not be true. Uh, but if it is the case, then uh, we know that the Soulblight Grave Lords, I think that's what they're called, the vampires, aren't maybe going to have the piratical theme that we thought that they might well have. And instead, they're going to be more Sylvanian, which I personally am super excited about. Uh, right, let's get into it, because there's no point uh, dallying around. Uh, I'm going to jump over to... Give me a second. Uh, I am bad at this sometimes. Hold on. Image. There we go. There I am. Woohoo! Uh, I'm on this side, so that's awkward. Uh, that is uh, Games Workshop's YouTube channel. We'll be coming that, uh, back to that later, because uh, that's going to be super important. Right, okay. So, uh, Games Workshop uh, have announced this little potato, uh, their little joke. And it is true, whenever someone does leak an image, it is hilariously small. I'm not sure if someone like data mines people's phones. I don't know what the situation is, but there's no way in today's modern world those images should happen. Now, the kind of current like joke and theory is that Games Workshop actually do it themselves to build hype, but I don't really care either way, left or right. Um, there's a really terrible video here, which I'll be talking about later. So we'll just ignore that. Uh, right, this is the thing. Look at these bad boys. Um, <laughs> please don't show blicks. I might explode. Now, these look great. Yeah, let's just get these bad boys up. I'm I'm all for these. I think they look good. I do. Someone I saw someone on Twitter say that they think the heads are a little bit small. That's true. I also think that they look a lot like kangaroos. Um, but a lot of the conversations being on, had online is that they aren't kangaroos and instead they look a little bit more like um, uh, like dinosaurs in the past. Um, uh, the video was really funny. I liked it. Gitli, I'm super happy you liked it, bro. Big love to you. We all got our own tastes and flavors and I'm glad you liked it. Um, but Snowman Wizard, uh, we all agreeing with this. Now, I want to just quote uh, Mr. Mephisto, uh, another great um, uh, Twitcher slash YouTuber dude, um, uh, who tweeted out earlier. He said he liked the design uh, mirroring and symmetry that you obviously get between these guys and you would get between Saneshi Seekers. And I completely understand that. Like, that makes loads and loads of sense. You see it the same in the Chaos Lord on Karkadrak and, of course, uh, the Lord, the, the the guy, the Stormcast Eternal on uh, Dark Oath. And, in fact, actually, you even get that on uh, Liege Kavalos uh, on 
um, whatever that mount is called for the OCR Bone Reapers, there's a kind of similar design philosophy. I like this one. You could just say that they're being lazy and just replicating the kind of like shape. But I actually think that what's really cool is there's an in-world narrative that we're drawing from this, from the designers. In the, all of the elves that you'll see here, their souls were once, or their ancestors' souls, were once trapped inside Slaanesh and were drawn out. And therefore, the, the Slaanesh and the Lumineth mirroring is actually awesome. Like, I think that's super cool, right? Um, I think that looks good. As to the fact that they've been released... As to the fact that they've been released not very long after the Lumineth book. There obviously were delays with the Lumineth book. And the fact that it might be coming out in a Broken Realms book, or it might be getting its own new book, or whatever. And we've seen this the same as we saw in uh, we saw with the Sinesh. Sinesh not really released that long ago for having a whole new book. I know Space Marine players are like literally chuckling to themselves. They're like, <laughs> it's a book every year, or it's not. It's not an army. I understand. However, like I, I think that there's a fair criticism that they could have uh, included these in there when they obviously were part of the range. That's the other part. Like a lot of what we see both in the narrative and the rules, it looks like the book, the Lumina Throne Lords book, was cut in half. So I feel like these were already released. And um, uh, <laughs> great point by uh, James being made there. Why is there a flag fox? They are not riding foxes. So just up here. Uh, absolutely. Why is there a... It's a good point. Why is there a fox on the flag? We'll talk about the models in a minute. Um, I think one of the things that is unfortunate for for us is it feels like Games Workshop now definitely are going to go... They, they're taking a range and they're chopping it in half. Uh, so Sinesh and Lumineth now, both two examples of this. I mean, big hope for Gargant players that we might end up with some new Gargant models. Thanks to Davidams for subscribing for four months. You, you're great. Um, so... It looks like this is their new strategy uh, to sell us the same thing in two halves. Uh, done it with Sinesh, and now they've done it with this. Um, I don't know how you guys feel about it. We could talk about their marketing strategy all day, but like we can do that later. I don't think that's particularly cool, but whatever. These guys look great. And now you've bought all your Dawn Riders, so now you're going to have to buy all your Ruse, which is fine. Uh, it's a Dingo, says Nate. That's fun. Um... Fox model better be coming. That's true. <laughs> right, anyway, let's look at the models for a little moment because I'm excited. Like, I don't collect Lumineth myself, but I do think the range is beautiful. Uh, I'm not so much into uh, the, the big cow mountain men, but I think they look fine. Uh, but I am into the Venari, and these guys are obviously more Venari. Uh, I don't understand releasing half seas post book. Uh, feels like an asshole move to me, says Kiwanis. I agree with you. I think it's. I think it's just mercantile, but it's a company at the end of the day and not a company that give a fuck about our feelings. So whatever. However, like we could talk about that all day or we could talk about awesome models. And I think we should talk about that. So there are archers, definitely a dual kit. Come on. There's no way this isn't a dual kit. There's definitely a version of this where they've all got swords or spears or something, which is sweet. And I'd be excited for that version as well. Uh, a box of five is quite interesting as well. Um, as opposed to a box of three. I thought these were fairly large, but maybe they're a little bit smaller than I gave them credit for. Um, uh, uh, so turn these into Exodite Eldar, says Will. I hear that. Uh, I ho so hope there's a combat unit. I would say that this is definitely a dual kit. They're missing a trick if they don't make a dual kit. So I would say that there's going to be a dual kit as well. There's some really interesting things also. Uh, while this part is cool, we know that in the preview video they showed where they showed some sort of camel rider, which I'm sure we'll see more of on Saturday, unless there are more leaks. There's a camel rider to come, or there's someone else. So what does everyone think about this model in the chat? I'd like to know what you're all saying here. Um, uh, so Scott B says, presumably Lumineth have split into four, not two, since they're four elemental spirits. Wow, that would be a real shitty move, I guess. Um, I'd be sold uh, on a dual kit of mounted wizards. Refos, I hadn't considered that. A unit of mounted wizards could be awesome. Uh, Meow, uh, Meow the second says absolutely into these crazies. Can't wait to paint them. That's fun. The DLC comment is spot on. There's a huge backlash against it. Um, okay, I agree with that. Uh, was the Camel Rider Hero they previewed? No, it wasn't. So there's another model we're going to look at in a minute, which needs to be previewed. Um, that tease model is further down the page. In turn, Matt, love you tons. Uh, I actually don't think that that is. So here's the models in in up close. Okay, okay. Now, they're not as fun as the, Sine the new Sinesh mounts. The new Sinesh mounts are way more fun. They've got hilarious faces. Um, but they're not bad models. Um, I think there's a lot to be said for the, uh, the paint job. 
Uh, anyone who collects Lumineth, is the detail on the armor built in or is that painted on? Is a question. But we need to talk about the hats. Oh boy. <laughs> detail is built in. Thank you so much. All right. Well, that's good. That'll make that detail much easier to paint. That's awesome. Um, that's super fun. These hats. Come on. I need some love or non loves for the hats. Archie in the chat. Love you. How are you? uh the hats are i mean for what should be a fast unit i mean look at this the flag is blowing in the wind so they're going fast he, like his clothes are blowing in the wind he's going fast that this bit of cloth and then there's how strong is this guy's neck is the real question <laughs> That's the real question. Also, we don't know. Now, they said that they're wind runners. Uh, that's the name of the unit. So while we're consider we're thinking that they might indeed hop, I think actually they run along like in Jurassic Park and you see them like running really fast. So I imagine they rear up or, I mean, it's a direct ripoff of Star Wars, right? Um, so the, the, the mounted riders in there. Uh, how do mounts compare to centaurs, Rob? They're doing it for you. Unfortunately, not Stu Flynn. If you guys have just joined in and don't normally watch me, I do have a kind of perversion for lady centaurs, but that's not for today's show, I don't think. Uh, but if you do see any lady centaur models, do send them my way. Um, two hat. So this guy's pretty fast. He's on a rock. Never love that, but it does make it dynamic, which is quite cool. I agree. Someone online said the heads and neck were too small, and I kind of dig that now. Like I, am, I, I get that. I think they're a bit, a little bit smaller, but I'm not sure about you guys. Um, will they hop? They're bound to. Gitly, love your tons. <laughs> so yeah, they've got this little dragon as well. They've obviously borrowed a lot of that Eastern uh, theme to their design, which I think is really awesome. Obviously, you've got the kind of, um, you've got the more kind of Arabian theme going on with the Sunesh, and then you go a little further east. And you end up with this more like Japanese esque style, uh, maybe Chinese, which I think is awesome. And also, like they've they've really been plumbing the depths of that kind of area geographically in their looks as well. Obviously, you kind of have that look also represented in the OCR Bone Reapers as well. So it'll be fun to see this played out, and whether or not we're going to see the Fire Nation version of this. Because uh, as JP I think said earlier in the chat, there is different. Uh... Oh, it's the first time I've slowed down. Oh, pretty good. Uh, there is <laughs> different elements. There should be four elements for these different Lumineth or whatever they're called. I feel that this is it. Um, I wish the head on the top of their helmet was bigger. I was hoping to use it as the Mask for Riders. Okay, that would be fun. Um, I wonder what the Water Temple is going to look like. Yeah, so we have, we've had wind and earth, so we need fire and air. It's going to take a bit of hydration while you guys catch up with me. Hmm. Okay, so like the Lumineth range is beautiful. More models for the Lumineth range. I'm into it. Last one. Oh man. Oh man, look at that. Okay. I dig them. I dig them. I'm gonna. I'm much more excited about the cavalry version. Uh, ultimately, um, the Sentinels. So these bows. Now we get to talk about this compared to Sentinels. Sentinels have three strings on their bows. These guys only have one. My friend Owen. Um, said to me that so sentinels shoot 30 inches in game if you guys are interested uh, and so and they ignore line of sight however these have only got one string so my assumption is they only fire 10 inches can you confirm or not confirm um, what does everyone think I feel that that would be fine but these guys are going to be movement 16 like definitely they're going to be like super fast um, so it'll be interesting to see what they look like move 28 inches baby oh boy so there's also like there's so many rumors of what else we might be seeing as well. Um, anyway, so that's those guys. There's also, as you can see, this kick-ass model here. Not sure how I feel about this model. Uh, I think it's beautiful, and I love the the Venari look to it. Um, I, on all of the armor, the actual animal itself, super well painted, looks great. It's got this liger tiger cow motif, right? Um, uh, it shoots the other way. They shoot 90 inches. Thank you. So one string, 90 inches. Turns out three, uh, the three strings is actually holding them back. Um, uh, Pittsburgh General, not sure of this Luminous Realm Lord, but I'm excited by this alone. The extra strings actually reduce rage. <laughs> Hold them back. 
<laughs> I'm not going to badmouth the lion here. I think it's beautiful. I think the model is exceptionally well uh, put together. Um, I love its footing, and I really like this part of it as well. It's just, it takes you back because it's so well constructed. There's so much detail here. You've got to admit, whatever else you think, the past two sets of models that we've seen released from Games Workshop are outrageous. Like, outrageous. The set, um, the Sinesh stuff that we saw with the Palaquin and the Riders is just a level of detail and quality above what we've seen them put out before. I think it's really exceptional. I think it's really, really good. Um, uh, but yeah, this little contact point is a drama for me. Uh, that's all. But you're going to be able to model him pretty cool as well. Like you could just put a big rock up here um, and you could have him flying around. So he looks exceptional. And like this is not. And so that's the last model for the Lumineth. Uh, like I'm really into it. And it means you've got a mounted character as well, which was a little bit of an issue with the Lumineth uh, book anyway, because you had some faster units. Um, but other than Technos, you didn't have any fast character-based units as well. Also, uh, it's an, the Venari Lord Regent isn't a named character. Another little thing missing from the uh, Lumineth is the ability for um, them to take artifacts. They normally take the Arudian Legion, like the War Scroll Battalion, and you can't, that means you generate an extra artifact, but you don't really have anyone to put it on. You've got the Calathar, and like, that's about it. So no, more characters is great. A big camel monster would be sweet as well. I'm very much looking forward to right, that. That's not Tyrion, that's just someone else. So I think this is fun. And I imagine it's more, there's more to this range as well. There's definitely the camel guy. I've heard rumors of bolt throwers, um, pretty, pretty much factually, like there are bolt throwers. Uh, so that's fun. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, just awesome looking uh, range. And it's going to be, it looks like it's the other half of this book, which could be a lot of dudes. We don't know how much more it's going to be. And if you actually look at some of the, like, when they've released a whole range, like the Necrons um, or the Space Marines, they actually put out a lot of kits. Uh, but it looks like what they did was, is they halved the, the amount of kits. So I imagine we're going to get nine, maybe ten kits. Um, uh, we, yeah, like nine or ten kits out of this release, which could be just... Ooh, why aren't these models in the Lumineth books, says Marty? I assume we talked about this uh, previously on the show, because it's like DLC. They split the book in half so that they can just release the other half later and make just as much money, simply put. They've probably done some research, or they haven't. Um. <laughs> are these the Divine, then? Yes, I think these are the Divine part of the release from the weekend. So I imagine there's also going to be a lot more. A lot more. A lot more. Now, I'm excited about this, and I think they're great. The thing that I'm also I'm probably more excited about... Now, I feel a little bit sorry for this model, because I think... So this is the Grave Lords. So the Soulblight Grave Lords. So they haven't actually even put the name on here, but uh, the leaked picture we saw, uh, we saw this. Now I'm all in for the vampires. Yeah, all in for the vampires, and I think they're going to look exceptional. Um, I just don't think this model itself looks exceptional. I'm sad that this is the first thing that we're seeing, but this mace is awesome. I like this. This is pretty cool. The armor's great. Pretty classic and Sylvanian. Um, I love the shield. I think that's great. It's just probably the only thing holding everyone back is the back hair. Unless people love the back hair. Uh, Crazy Horse, thanks for subscribing, baby. Big love to you. Um, I like the armor. Uh, I love uh, the vamp. It's just the hair. Instant 4K points of vamps on day one. I'm in, gents. So, Refoss is in. Uh, I don't think that it's going to be Vampire Pirates. I think Vampire Pirates is out. Uh, a cool helmet would sort that model right out. I agree with that. Um, very Lord of the Rings vibe. I thought that, Chris CB. I thought very Lord of the Ringsy here with the armor uh, and the shield. Very Lord of the Ringsy. That does look a bit weird just because you can do something, etc. Uh, I like the look of the quasi Sylvanian, almost Castlevanian look. Yes, I'm. I'm all for traditional. Uh, I'm sorry to say, it, trad vampires. I think um, maybe it's the old school emo in me, but ultimately, I do want these to be more traditional vampires i want armored vamps i want vampire cavalry i want a vampire lord on a new dragon i want like i want all of the good things i want like i want and if i get some werewolves with it as well i'm all in um is there a dragon in this faction says ryan burris uh so soul blight if you get the warhammer app or in fact even if you go on the games workshop store you can find out what's already in the soul blight faction so soul blight grave lords is what these guys are um so i think uh, any bats on vampires versus kangaroo air temples to start box for the release? Uh, no data list. I don't think that that will be the situation. Maybe there will. Maybe there'll be a, a start a, like a box 
one of those box sets where two halves is both. I don't know if that's going to be the case. We're still waiting on Sinesh models. I mean, it couldn't be a more exciting time to be into Age of Sigmar. We currently have three new armies, or, sorry, two and a half armies <laughs> that we're waiting... Oh, actually, no, two. Two and two one-halves armies. So we've got the rest of the Sinesh book being released in the Sinesh range, and the models look amazing. We have the Lumineth half being released as well, also looks amazing. And then we've got these vampires. You can't really tell much more about this than how pretty they look, but I'm I'm into them. Um, is she is a lady, right? It's uh, a great question. I assume so. I assume so. Yeah, maybe because of because of the tapered waist, I would think that she's a lady. Um, uh, Sean Price says I'm thinking of starting AOS, but should I wait for the new edition? Uh, Sean Price, I'm not 100% certain on that. I think you're all good buying the models that you like, uh, but I would always buy the more the more recently released ranges. So start like things like Ozark Bone Reapers are a good example, or any of the Sinesh or Sylvaneth, not Sylvaneth, um, Sinesh stuff uh, would be good. Uh, but if you want to start Age of Sigmar, I'd buy into the new range of stuff. Even though everything's inside a battle tome, I'd be a little bit worried about like it getting updated or refreshed. And that's pretty much my advice for Age of Sigmar and 40k now. Uh, everyone thinking, uh, says in the lady, thank you. Warcom thinks bloke, so definitely a lady then. <laughs> and I guess really, the question for everyone, the fact that we don't get pirate vampires, and as has been said later on in the, earlier on in the chat, what do we think, um, what do we think uh, would make good pirates in Age of Sigmar? Because it's not going to be vampires, is the real question. I'm rooting for ogres. Uh, pirate ogres is where I'm at for pirates, but I don't know if you guys have got anyone. Uh, orcs, pirate orcs can be good. Um, can we just get pa get bacon sale? Oh, panda, you know I would love that so much. Oh my god, Kate bacon sale is a centaur. <laughs> we still might be in heart. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, so yeah, a lot of people asking about how this affects the stonks. If you don't know what stonks are, it's kind of the trading price of models in Age Sigma or 40k. Obviously, with the announcement of new Lumineth and with the announcement of new Soulblight, does this up the stonks or it downs the stonks? Um, probably the Blood Knights, which are already very expensive, probably the stonks on those is much lower, so they're, they're not as worthwhile as they once were. Well, we wait to see what this range is. However, Lumineth stonks, pretty much the same. These are going to be some additional stuff. I imagine the Ruse are going to be very popular, uh, so maybe the Dawn Riders might be, maybe won't get such a look in. Uh, but overall, um, I think the stonks are pretty strong, uh, to be honest. Um, pirate Chaos Dwarves. Yeah, you got it. Pirate Orcs, about for that. Uh, human Pirates, uh, that's good. Uh, change the hair colour, black and grey. Change the armour to traditional red armour from Soulblight, and the model is 100% better. I mean, paint jobs are always one of those things as well. Um, hey, Craig Moore, hope you're well. Uh, I'm glad I held off buying full 2K in Luma Throne World to wait for more models. Zirak, it's a good call on your part. Um, and I think that's right. And and I think that we're going to see so many more. This range is going to be massive. And I think that we're also going to see a massive range, which is three new armies for Age of Sigma. Th wow. Again, two halves. and But like two, three releases that we're now hyped for for Age of Sigma and Broken Realms books. So actually, it, we could have been in a better place. Right. Unless anyone's got any questions, I'm going to move on to the next part of the show, which is about the marketing, uh, which is pretty much tied to this. But... I'd like to deep dive it. So um, unless anyone's got any questions about this. Uh, and if it's the first time you've ever tuned into Thomas Wargamer, we're live every day, midday, uh, 12 till 1, uh, British summer time. And also Mondays we talk Age of Sigma and Tuesday, uh, Thursday nights we talk 40k. So you should join us because it's a great community, the Thomas Wargamer community. So please do. Um, uh, this makes Lumineth by far the largest of the new armies and the only one to get a second wave. Uh, Scott B, I would say that the Sinesh is the same army. I feel that they did the same with Sinesh. They broke it in half. Sinesh probably should have been released like towards last summer, which will pretty much put it on a year uh, release to release. So maybe that is something that we're going to see new. We might only see nine or ten kits for the vampires when we see them come out, in which case we could probably expect there's going to be another half to the vampires at some point. So worth keeping uh, that in mind. Um, uh, talking about making armies based on geographic locations, they could make a Somali pirate. So it's <laughs> good, I guess. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> are you playing something big for your one year stream street warp spider yeah probably uh not sure what okay let's talk about let's talk about something which annoyed me today uh which is the same thing right which is the same thing it's the models so the leaks came out yesterday and these response to these models is what we were talking about 
Now, I've talked about this a little on the Stream Street shows, uh, and it's been a kind of an ongoing conversation with me in the Twitch chat, and we've really developed this conversation to where I think it's a pretty good, well-thought-out conversation. And that's that Games Workshop don't market their product very well. First point, yes, they make a shit ton of money. It's a great point, well made, I hear you, and I'm on board with it. What I mean is, is I don't think they market their, their product as well as they could. Let's put it that way, shall we? Yeah, I think that's really important. Now, when the leaks come out, and again, how do these leaks reach us is always a fascination. The marine stuff leaks, this stuff leaked, any of their big release stuff generally tends to leak. And the question is how? We don't really need to go into that today. Um, the important part is, is that when they leak, there's always a response. There's two. There's people who are very, very excited, like me, about what this might mean and what we're going to see. And there are people who think that the leaks are bad, somehow because they take away from the creative people who've helped to showcase these things. It's a good point, yeah? I can understand that. However, probably if you're making that argument, and in the past year, you haven't made the argument that with their 200, 300% increase in profits or whatever the hell they made, Games Workshop, haven't just flat increased the pay of all their creative people, and they've made that profit increase, by the way, every year for five years. If we haven't seen a significant pay rise for all of the creatives, in fact, not even the creatives, just everyone in the company, street sweepers, the guys that chained the bin, the guy that answered the phones, any of those people, yeah, then probably you should shut the fuck up and sit down. That's probably what I think, yeah? If you complain about that, really what you're saying is, I want to be a fanboy, and instead, you don't give a fuck about creative people at all. That's my, that's my first port of call, right. Mm. Follow up. I used to be one of those creative people, for example. There was a picture of Magnus, um, uh, the demon Primarch, the first demon Primarch ever that was released in a bin. And I had to get called into Games Workshop to record a video very much like uh, the video that was recorded today. It was quite successful and people seemed to think it was quite fun. Yeah. Uh, however, however, is that the best way to showcase these models? That's a great point. I don't think a still image is ever a great way to showcase these models. And actually, if you do really care about the creative people who I've interviewed when I was on Warhammer Live, about how much effort and time they put into creating these models, I would say that not only do those images, those still images, not serve a purpose to showcase to us how much we give a fuck about the models and how exciting they are, Games Workshop themselves do a terrible job of it in the same way, right? That's the kind of key point I think I'd like to stress in this kind of um, audio, audio, uh, I don't know what it is, essay, let's call it that, right? So, uh, Let's talk about how they don't launch their products well at all. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about so because they've done it really well in the past and they don't do that same thing um, anymore at all. And I think that this is really important. So we're going to talk about this uh, via the, their YouTube channel. We're going to experience it together. OK, uh, because some of you might not have been a part of this anymore and uh, or you might not have seen them or you might be fairly new to the hobby and you haven't experienced this process at all. And that's a shame. So. First thing we're going to do, we're going to go into the Warhammer uh, YouTube channel. All Tom comments are turned off. Lol. Right, then we're going to go on to the created playlists. Yeah, here we go, here we go. And we're going to find the Age of Sigmar narrative ones. So let's just check. Crypt Hunters, Warhammer Underworld Diachasm, to Paint Stormcast, Angels of Death, Learn to Play Warhammer 40,000, The Podcast, Air Paints, Beast Grave, Warhammer Fest. Oh, yeah, they don't have one. They don't have one for us to see the stuff. Okay, not there. Get inside in Warhammer. Cool. Box games. Cool. How to build a pelt. Cool. But none of the story for their game. Uh, nope, can't scroll any further. Here we go. I've scrolled all the way to the bottom. Martin Orlando AOS. Scroll to the bottom. Okay. So, instead of that, let's go, let's go for a little search, shall we? Uh, because we always need to search. These are the things I've been searching for recently, apparently. So uh, a sight into my life. And let's talk about uh, the Sanesh stuff. Do we see a Sanesh video? Sanesh. Uh, okay, this might take a while. Uh, it should come up from Games Workshop. It didn't. It didn't. Uh, All Specs Tactics, great channel, by the way. If you guys want to listen to someone in a monotone voice, tell you the rules. Uh, but still, great channel. The Knights of Sanesh. Uh, this might take a while. Sorry, everyone. Uh, meet the Heed Knights. Here we go. Let's go. Right. Okay. All right. 
sweet, some models. Sweet, some more models. Sweet, some more models. Some more model, don't know its name. Another model, don't know its name. Okay, I know its name. Some, du some dudes on a horse. Where are they from? Are they fish? I don't know any of these things right now. Still don't know any of this. Okay. Care more about the music than the models? Some cool looking wizard. Looks great. What's it do? What's his name? Okay. Literally don't give a shit. Because why would I? Like, there's some cool models. Sweet. And they're beautiful. Unarguably. Yeah. However, I've learned nothing from this. Like, I've learned nothing. At all. In any way, shape, or form. And, most importantly, when you leak an image, for instance, like, the whole payoff. Let's talk about the build-up. Oh, love a bit of build-up. I'm going to take a drink. I'm very excited about this subject, by the way. Mm. Right. Let's talk about the build-up. So we know there's a preview at the weekend. Sweet. We don't know what it is. Sweet. And that will be the whole payoff, which is terrible for building hype. Terrible. What if months ago there was like a video that like was like some Suneshi story and we were like, ooh. And then there was another one. It was like, ooh. And then there was like, like, we, like there was another bit of narrative with like these running things and something else. We'd be so excited to finally see the model. But right now we've got nothing. So let's look at a different version of this. Yeah? Osiarch, Bone Reapers. Um, where's my eye? And let's find it. Uh, great, great. Also, another great guy, Heywo Twitch. Always should check him out for some great start collecting videos. Uh, here we go. Okay. Now, let's have a look at this. Ooh. I get it, it's Eastern from the music, and I get that they love bones. I'm into it. I have been killed and reborn. Destroyed and remade. Yeah, loving that. I survived the fall of the Storm God's hammer and tore my way free from the Soul of East prison. Fuck yeah. I have Fuck rebuilt yeah. myself here in my homeland. While really into I that. must raise the army, I must lead. Soon we march forth. Soon we connect the tithe of bones. I haven't seen a model at all. I've got a boner as big as those guys. I'm excited. Yeah, I got story. I know that they like get reforged or something. They're from some sort of like death citadel. I don't know what that is. I don't know what the tithe is, but I'm excited. I'm like hard as a rock and I'm excited. And you can release that months before you show us a model. And most importantly, when you then show me the model, I'm fucking excited. Like I'm like jonesed as hell. Yeah, I'm like, I can't wait to see it. And then I see it. So that is how you build up excellent story. But most importantly, this is the point. If you appreciate the artists, if you appreciate the sculptors, you appreciate the people who write the background, like Phil Kelly and all those guys. You, you appreciate the people who develop the rules, whatever that might be. And so you would develop that storyline before you showcase the model. Because the model's the payoff. The, the hype isn't the model. That isn't, it's not like, show us the model, then tell us the story. It's tell us the story, then show us the fucking model. That's how it works. That's why the Horus Heresy is so good from Forge World. Well, that's why it's sold so much. Because they wrote loads of books, people were excited, and they're like, I'll buy the fucking model. That's how they got excited about it. <sighs> that's my point. And we could do this all day. Um... <laughs> <laughs> has anyone got any questions or thoughts because that's what they need to do like i get it they make loads of money and i get it they great make they make great models and i'm a fan that's why i talk about it all the time that's why i'm so excited it's a brilliant game full of amazing people i love the hobby i love the miniatures not all of them like i like the rules not all of them croak like but i like what this is 
and the narrative also problematic. Like, they should be throwing narrative down our throats. It's a brand new game. No one knows the fucking story at all. You're like new. You're like, what's the story? Like, well, there are eight realms. And they're like, how? And you're like, where can I find the video from Games Workshop that tell me about them? It's like, it doesn't exist, which is moronic. Like, create the setting for your fucking game. Uh, anyway. Uh, so, so much better than current marketing. So much better than their current marketing is what that was. And they've stopped doing this stuff. And it's sad, right? So what about the leaks brought this chat on, uh, says Mike Mullis. The fact is, it is that showing the models, because Games Workshop don't do anything different. I've seen a, a Lumineth Rue Lord last night, and I'm as excited as I would have been seeing that same model on Saturday at the preview. It would have been the same, because all I've done is see the model. It does nothing. Let's watch the Scragrot video, because obviously we need to watch the Scragrot video. In fact, actually, can we, can we watch? I know we're mainly Age of Sigmar guys, but can we talk about the Gene Steeler Cult video? Can we talk about this? Oh, boy. Um, let's do this one. Okay, I'm making this big. This is how excited I am for this. In the sunless body of our hive, the flock of the faithful grows. We are guided art. by our great father's sacred vision, protected by his loving hands. Beautiful. Within these holy shadows we dwell, while the impure bathe in spire top starlight. And what lies between those stars? What sails beyond those distant suns? Shrouded in night, born within that eternal black, our redeemers, our gods, truer than the silent, long, dead I love emperor, it when the tentacles come in. It's fucking great. The children of the void. We hear them in our dreams. We feel them in our blood. They call, and we will answer. We will rise Still haven't seen a model. The engines of labor There's a model, but it's artwork. Love it. Servitude. This world will burn. It will be cleansed, purified, made ready, and the heavens will deliver our reward. Reckoning comes. My God, this None is so good. Shall survive our ascension. They're brilliant. Like it's brilliant. It's how they should market all their products. They don't do it. it. Pisses me off. I love the game. I love the models. I want them to do a better job, and that's all I give a fuck about. That's it. So you can show me potato cam. Uh, Alex, uh, attempt tabletop. Thanks for the donation for five quid. All of you can like, you can you can be upset about potato cams all day, but I never will be because until Games Workshop give a fuck about marketing their product properly, I won't care either. Thanks for listening to the Honest World Game. You guys have been great. I'm live again tomorrow talking about a TTS event, which is fun, uh, and uh, you can join me on Patreon or you can subscribe or whatever. I hope you all have a great day. You're all wonderful people, and I'll see you soon. Thank you.